Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LinkedIn series In the Pipeline. I am Brian Zitten, CEO of Regora, where we focus on appraisal software to streamline and automate the residential real estate appraisal process. Uh, this series is focused on highlighting thought leadership all across real estate, mortgage, tech. And today I am joined by one of the leading voices in the credit market, capital markets, the chairman of Whalen Global Advisors, Chris Whalen. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, I figured maybe we can just start. I, I saw, you know, the clip of you on Fox a couple of weeks ago. Maybe if you could just start with like, you're just kind of high level summary of where you think we are in the overall, you know, macro environment. And then maybe we can kind of narrow that down in terms of how it's affecting mortgage and, and real estate and things like that. So maybe just if you can give folks your kind of overview of, of where we're at right now, that'd be awesome. Well, sure. I'd be happy to. The The basics are this. Um, the Fed for a number of years has been biased in terms of essentially promoting inflation. The uh, left wing at the Federal Reserve Board, which is obviously includes Janet Yellen and also Powell to, to a degree, uh, Chairman uh, Jay Powell, uh, really thought inflation was too low and therefore they were freed from the limits of the, the statute set by Congress and did things to make inflation go up and they were successful. Then we had COVID. So when you put those two things together and you saw the Fed in 2020, 21 driving rates down so that people like me, for example, ended up with a 3% mortgage. Um, you know, obviously this was excessive. So now the Fed is resetting interest rates and we may see a new floor for Fed funds around three, three and a half percent over the long term. I mean, next couple of years, this next 12 months, I think you're going to see Fed funds around five and I think it's going to stay there for a while. So this implies that we could have mortgage rates in the high single digits going through next year. Now, the narrative, as you probably saw today, the inflation numbers were better. All of the buy side uh, advisors and, and firms are desperately trying to convince the Fed to stop because, you know, their business is being hurt. But you got to remember that all these economists that you see on TV work for buy side firms. Now, what do they want? They want higher assets under management. So there's a basic conflict from that crowd and their friends in the media. And I think you have to realize that the Fed is very chastened. The Fed is, is looking at trying to restore their credibility uh, politically as well as in an economic sense. So I think that's kind of where we're headed. I, I hope uh, you know, that the Fed can stop and that we can see spreads start to narrow. The primary secondary spread in mortgage now is one and three quarter percent. So it's very hard for people in our business today to make money, to get a premium when they sell a loan. And think about this, the on the run really for Fannie Mae for next month is a six and a half. So that suggests you need, you know, an 8% coupon on a good loan to break even. That's tough, you know, but I think the industry is always optimistic. There are people out there that'll tell you we'll be back down to five and a half by next summer. Uh, so we'll see. Right. Yeah. It seems, you know, to be pretty much dependent on what the, the Fed decides to do in terms of pivoting or not, um, you know, you seem less optimistic. So assuming that they kind of stick the course and, you know, keep keep raising rates um, to your point, you know, mortgage coupons and, and, and how that's affecting the secondary market. It seems like real estate prices have kind of lagged, though, and maybe not come down as much as people oh, thought. And, you know, rent is actually, you know, kind of staying where it is a little bit. Like, how do you think that do you think this is just taking longer to hit in the real estate world or it's kind of we've, we've seen just a new norm in terms of pricing and rents or how, how do you think about how this is you know going to be affecting um, pricing and rents moving forward? Well, home prices tend to turn slowly. Think of it as a school of fish. You have the inferior assets in the back and the better assets in the front. So if you draw a line across the mortgage market around the average loan size around $300,000, a little more, everything below that level is going to stay pretty well bid because there's no supply. Half of the homes that are being built today are going to rent strategies, to your point, right? So, you know, I expect to see compression on high-end properties that kind of ran away during COVID. Silly, really. Vacation properties, for example, which were snapped up all across the country. There's no inventory for high-end vacation properties anywhere in the U.S. right now. But I think overall, you know, prices have to come down because of what the Fed did. 
And this is why Fannie and Freddie just put aside four and a half billion dollars in loan loss reserves because of falling home prices. That directly affects credit because you know we haven't had any credit costs for the past couple of years and one of the fours, particularly the prime stuff owned by banks, because the home prices went up so much that if someone actually defaulted, you sold the house and you were left over with a, a surplus uh, and the bank made money. So, you know, when loss given default is negative, and the average, by the way, on one to fours is 70% going back 50 years. So today it's minus 30%. That gives you some example of what the Fed has done. Uh, the other thing I would have your uh, viewers look at is look at the accumulated other comprehensive income for banks in the second and third quarters. It was like 20% of total capital. And again, that's mark to market losses that have not been realized yet. They're just telling you what's on their book, right? And banks are burying this stuff in their portfolios to get away from the ugly disclosure, right? But that will affect bank returns over time. So there's a lot of pricing anomalies that were caused by the Fed's action due to COVID that we're gonna have to work out over years. Um, there's about a third of all one to four family mortgages and the related securities that nobody wants. The coupons are too low. So we've created this ghetto uh, in terms of the bond market, and it's affecting how the market trades. So that you know, to me, there's so many structural issues that have been created by quantitative easing. I think at some point the Fed has to come out publicly and say, "Well, we're not going to do this again," mm -hmm. because it's just had a terrible effect on the term structure of interest rates. You have investors basically telling the Treasury they have to buy back Treasury bonds with low coupons. Think about that. So we're reversing Janet Yellen's Operation Twist, which was one of the worst ideas I've ever seen. You know, I've worked in the bond market for 30 years. So, you know, it's a strange time. It really is. Uh, you have all the major agencies in Washington attacking the industry. Ginnie Mae, uh, Fannie and Freddie are doing loan repurchases on low coupon loans that are performing. Okay. It, it's a very strange time in the mortgage industry. Yeah, no, a lot of interesting dynamics all kind of competing. One that one trope, though, that people in the media seem to be continuing to parrot, though, is like, well, the consumer is still strong, you know. Um, and so my, my question, you know, you just mentioned a lot of factors that may cause real estate prices to come down kind of on, on the supply side, right, in terms of mm -hmm. continued lack of affordability, things like that. Do you foresee also like increases in we, we saw like credit delinquencies tick up a little bit, but do you, mm -hmm. do you foresee that translating into kind of higher delinquencies with mortgages as well and that contributing to some prices coming down or, or is it mostly like a supply side sort of thing from your from your point of view? No, you see the Fed's actions, and this goes back 12 years since the great financial crisis, have, when you have very low interest rates and you're pushing up home prices and you're doing other things in the market, it pushes down defaults. It pushes down credit costs. So my sense is credit costs will normalize for banks. I think you're going to see credit costs for FHA loans get back up into the teens. And remember, there's still a lot of people on forbearance right now that have not exited. So I think, yes, the industry is going to see credit costs go up. And over time, you know, the dynamic between rent and, and home purchases that you mentioned before is interesting because if I can't buy a house, what do I have to do? I have to rent. So in some markets, the fact that affordability has gone down for home purchases is actually going to push up rental costs. And that's a big factor in the Fed's inflation numbers. I think the Fed may actually eventually have to loosen up a little bit and say, well, we'll go for a 3% target for inflation instead of two. Because getting down to two, given rent costs, energy, everything else, is going to be tough. But a lot of these things the Fed can't affect. You know, these are structural issues. Uh, that have been caused by a number of factors. We don't have to get into that. But the housing industry is totally correlated to interest rates. So when interest rates move, volumes move in the interest rate in the industry. And that's what we're dealing with now. You have a lot of firms that are going to have to survive on their servicing books over the next 12 months. Uh, and if you have servicing, you know, if you got them, smoke them, right? That's good. But if you have been historically selling your servicing, you basically have to turn the lights out and wait. A lot of firms are facing that decision. Do I wait, cut my costs as much as I can, just hunker down until rates fall and volumes come back? 
that's the key question for the whole industry right now. Right. And, and to your point earlier, basically is, you know, waiting on Mr. Powell to kind of make a decision around what, what they want to do. And to your point, they may be forced to uh, adjust their inflation targets based I mean, unless they want, you know, absolute <laughs> cataclysm across, you know, a variety yeah. of industries. So well, um, that, that's right. And I think also, you know, there's the Fed has to be more cognizant of how their policies impact the markets. They have not been. They tend to sit there and model everything against GDP growth. And, you know, when you're talking about market liquidity, for example, in the bond market, which is where mortgages are priced, uh, that's probably not going to work. So I, I, I hope that we can get, a, you know, a little bit more even treatment uh, with the Republicans taking over the Congress. It's interesting that both Democrats and Republicans are shooting at Jay Powell, by the way. They're telling him to stop. So if the inflation numbers continue to improve, hopefully the Fed's going to stand pat after December and see what happens. Because remember, we're running off the balance sheet while all this is happening. The Fed is no longer the big buyer of mortgage-backed securities. But to be fair, supply, uh, net supply in the industry is going to probably reach zero by next year. Uh, if volumes fall enough, the total amount of mortgages outstanding will actually start to run off a little bit. And I'll give you an example. Uh, home equity products have been up 15% year over year, right? Very strong growth. But the old portfolio is still running off. Most of those loans have seven-year terms. So the net runoff is about 8% a year. So that means we've got to go make a lot of new loans to you know, offset the runoff and then show growth in the portfolio. And the portfolio is growing. We did a piece in my blog this week about that that might interest your readers. Gotcha. Yeah. So a home equity even stronger than people may you know, initially. It's, it's a rising rate product. You're not right. going to sell home equity loans in a falling interest rate environment. Doesn't make sense. But in a rising rate environment, if you're sitting there with a two and a half percent primary mortgage and you need some cash for you know, your kids going to college or something, it's a it's not a bad alternative. Right. Awesome. Well, a lot of uh, amazing insights and, and, you know, I think you very easily simplified a lot of the dynamics happening today. So really appreciate the time, Chris. And it'll <laughs> I be, hope so. Yeah, I, not. We, we work in the mortgage ghetto, you know, most media do not understand the bond market. There's like three or four people that cover our industry that you can actually talk to about secondary market sales, for example. So, yeah, well, I think that the mortgage people will definitely get it. So, uh, oh, yeah. so yeah, I appreciate the time. Really, uh, Really glad that you could join us. Hey, my pleasure. Have a great day. Yeah, you as well. Thank you.